what the weirdest thing you've heard has microplastics in it. For me, going down this rabbit hole, it was sperm. To find out there's microplastics in male ejaculate just blew my mind. Like, I get it, it's everywhere, it's in us, but it's in sperm, man. Like, what? Hello friends, welcome back. This week I have been rabbit holing the world of microplastics. What are they? Where are they? How many of them are there? Should we be concerned? Well, let's have a discussion about that and do some reacting to what we can find on the wonderful world of the internet. Now, before we get into discussing microplastics, it might make sense to figure out what are they first. So let's watch this little clip do a bit of investigative journalism. Microplastics are pieces smaller than five millimeters. Some of them are used in cosmetics or toothpaste, but most result from floating waste that is constantly exposed to UV radiation and crumbles into smaller and smaller pieces. 51 trillion such particles float in the ocean where they are even more easily swallowed by all kinds of marine life. 51 trillion is a gigantic number. I don't even think our human minds can comprehend just how much that is. And there's an important point here that these aren't just accumulating in the environment, they are being consumed by things in the environment. Predatory species, fish, the cattle that we eat, because it's not just found in the ocean, it's found in our rainwater, it's in our soils. So just painting the picture here, microplastics are everywhere. They are ubiquitous in our food supply, in our water, in the environment, and in the animals that we eat. We are what we eat eats. This has raised concerns among scientists, especially about health risks from the chemicals that are added to plastic. BPA, for example, makes plastic bottles transparent, but there's also evidence that it interferes with our hormonal system. I'm glad they're touching on that. We know that BPA and this other branch of xenoestrogens can cause hormonal imbalances or problems in the body because they mimic estrogen. And that is not what anybody wants. In a world where we're kind of living in an estro generation because we've got so much of this in our food supply, in our water, plastic water bottles, fragrances, etc. You see things like the decline in testosterone for men. You see things like early onset of um, periods for young girls. It's very worrying. And I think this, you know, excess estrogen, xenoestrogen piece ties into it. And they're very closely related. The xenoestrogens, the BPAs, and microplastics. DEHP makes plastics more flexible, but may cause cancer. It would be pretty bad if microplastics are toxic because they travel up the food chain. Zooplankton eat microplastic. Small fish eat zooplankton. So do oysters, crabs, and predatory fish. And they all land on our plate. Microplastics have been found in honey, in sea salt, in beer, in tap water, and in the household dust around us. Eight out of 10 babies and nearly all adults have measurable amounts of phthalates, a common plastic additive in their bodies. And 93% of people have BPA in their urine. Pretty crazy, right? I think we get the picture here. Microplastics are everywhere. We are consuming them, whether we like it or not. Heck, we breathe them in. There was a study not too long ago that showed that the average person can be ingesting a credit card size amount of microplastics every week. Some of that is coming through the air that we breathe. Our babies have microplastics. 66% of placentas that were tested in this study found microplastics in the placenta. It's in human breast milk. As the mom is feeding the baby, this incredible gift of nutrition, it's still tainted with microplastics. We see it in every tissue in the human body. I found science supporting that microplastics even cross the blood-brain barrier and end up in our noggins, in our brain tissue. It's in semen samples. It is everywhere, it's scurry, it accumulates, but what we've heard for a long time is that we don't need to be too concerned. Of course, we're told this by the people that produce this enormous amount of plastic because they have to do something with it. They turn it into clothes, like your polyester clothing. They turn it into PVC pipes, which are gonna run throughout your home. They turn it into plastic water bottles. And many people consume those plastic water bottles, think they're making a better choice for their health because it's filtered, reverse osmosis, whatever you wanna call it, without realizing that the leach xenoestrogens like BPA and microplastics into their body. There was a recent study that looked at the amount 
of microplastics in your conventional bottled water and found that it's a hundred times greater than previously believed. Let's see what Uncle Joe has to say about this stuff. A certain amount of time passes and you've eaten a credit card worth of plastic. Jamie thought it was a year, I thought it was a month. It's a fucking week. One week? One week. Are you kidding Every me? Every week, the average human being eats, eats a, a credit, credit card. card sized piece of plastic because That's you crazy. consume so many microplastics Jeez. in so many different things. It's in our bloodstream. Yeah. It's, and That's it's crazy. also, it does all sorts of weird stuff to your hormones. Yeah. It's terrible for you. Yeah, Joe knows. It's crazy, right? I don't know if you have a wallet. People still have those these days. I have one and sometimes I look in there and I'm like, what is all this junk? These, these old credit cards or punch cards or whatever, just lay out what you've got in your wallet. You'll see like 10 credit cards. You, you That's 10 weeks worth of what you're ingesting or breathing in or absorbing from your environment. That's just crazy. And whether you're a scientist or not, or whatever the science says currently, I think all of us can logically agree that that is probably not supposed to be in our body. And if it is, especially in those large quantities in these borderline microscopic particle sizes, it's causing harms. All right, here's a little clip about a debate of whether microplastics are actually causing harms. Well, is that, number one, we don't know with certainty today that this is doing any harm to people or, or their offspring. Uh, number two, the burden of proof ought to be on you that it is in fact doing yeah. some damage. Yeah. What's your response to that? I mean, let, let, let's, just, let's just reflect on the bonkers thing about this debate which is that we're having a calm discussion here today about the fact that humans are suffused with tiny plastic particles, that babies are being born pre-polluted. I mean, there was a study just in the last couple of weeks showing plastic particles in a human breast milk. I mean, it's, it's, it's inconceivable. Uh, and so the notion that the plastic industry advances that you know, none of us should be terribly concerned because there aren't any bodies in the streets that can be pinned on plastics pollution uh, is nonsensical. Uh, so the, the, for starters, 40% of all the plastics produced are for single-use items. He's raising some really valid points there, right? We're told that this is completely okay, when in reality, we know that it's not. And I'll, I'll be talking about some of the recent scientific studies on the effects and potential harms of microplastics in the body. But the fact that we are just told by the overlords that this is okay, reminds us of many other things that we were once told were totally okay, only to realize years or decades later that they were in fact not okay. That we were just being brushed aside like some inconvenience because we want our food supply or our waters to not be so poisoned and that we should just kind of shut up and enjoy a side of plastic with each of our meals. It is lunatics. It is crazy. It is like we live in the upside down world where we think that's okay. And the burden of proof lies upon us as citizen scientists and people that don't want to consume pr plastic to show that, hey, this is probably a good thing. That's wild. Rather than, rather than uh, you know, the onus being on consumers, being on governments to wait for the evidence to take any action, uh, uh, we need to reverse that. That's a really important point because a lot of this stuff that we're talking about, it's going to fall on the backs of you and I to make these choices because the government isn't doing anything about it because they're waiting for the evidence. Well, guess what? The evidence is coming. But the fact that that is their stance is tragic because government is for the people. And if they really cared about people, wouldn't you think they would want to do something about this? Wouldn't they think, wouldn't you think that they would want to prevent or at least limit the amount of microplastics that unborn babies are being subjected to because it's so ubiquitous in our environment? So on that point of not having science to support that microplastics actually cause harm, but we do have a lot of mouse model and animal model data, but this is really interesting. You'll see here that this is pretty recent, March 7th, 2024, published in the New England Journal of Medicine. This was in Italy. Um, the long story short is they found plaques in the carotid arteries of people that had buildup and they removed the plaques. And then they agreed to, uh, the, the participants agreed to let the researchers do kind of a biopsy of these plaques to see what was going on. So 257 extracted plaques and 150 of those had microplastics in them, measurable, measurable amounts of microplastics. 
polyethylene was detected in carotid artery plaques of 150 of the 304 patients. So that's over 50%, 58.4%. There is other things in her here as well, other measurable amounts, polyvinyl chloride, and they used electron microscopes here to really find it, radiographic examination to find these tiny, tiny pieces. If you recall the first video, we call a microplastic anything under five mil, but you can see under five mil, you can't see these tiny little shards of microplastics that these researchers did a really good job of finding. And basically what they found is in the tissues that had these high concentrations of microplastic, they had a four point five times increased risk of not only a cardiac event like a heart attack, but any event leading to death. 4.5 times increased risk. Considering that cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in the developed Western world, and microplastics are increasing that by 4.5%, or 4.5 times rather, that doesn't bode well for the health outcomes of people that are unconsciously a lot of the time consuming large amounts of microplastics. You can check out the study, but they go on to examine potentially what's going on and maybe the microplastics are accumulating in the tissues and almost acting like scaffolding for more plaque to accumulate. And it's just causing all kinds of oxidative stress at the level of that tissue, but it's non-localized. It goes around the system and this can lead to all kinds of dire health outcomes. It's pretty crazy. Another study here in the International Journal of Molecular Science, 2023, acute exposure to microplastics induce changes in behavior and inflammation in young and old mice. They go on to state that data from these assays suggest that short-term exposure to microplastics induces both behavioral changes as well as alterations in immune markers in liver and brain tissues. Additionally, we noted that these changes differed depending on age, indicating a possible age-dependent effect. Now, of course, there is going to be an age-dependent effect because you take a newborn baby that's fresh out of the womb, albeit that that placenta did have microplastics in it, and so might the mother's breast milk, but it hasn't had that much time to accumulate massive amounts of microplastics that can lead to the oxidative stress and the inflammation of brain and liver tissue. Whereas somebody that's 30 years old has had a lot longer and 40 years old and 50 years old. And as these are becoming more ubiquitous in our food supply, our environment and our water, you can only help but think we're gonna accelerate the timeline of younger people getting to this critical mass of microplastics in the body that is gonna cause all kinds of dis-ease manifestation at an earlier age, which is really quite tragic. Speaking of babies, Let's see what this lady has to say. Your kids need to stop eating and drinking out of plastic. Plastics actually hurt your baby's brain and body development. All plastic leaches toxic chemicals. There was a study that came out a few years ago showing that plastic baby bottles will actually leach millions of microplastics into what your baby is drinking every single day. And what's crazy about that is I'm a father of two kids and we do our very best to minimize this. You know, we've got stainless steel drinking cups or glass and we eat off normal plates and we don't do Tupperwares and things like that. But every product targeted at babies is plastic from chew toys to the sippy cups, to what they eat out of, to the utensils, everything is plastic. And whilst you increase the amount of microplastics that leach from a product, um, depending on heat, so they get way worse if you heat them up in the microwave or if you put them in the dishwasher, they leach excessive amounts of microplastics. You still do get exposure from these things just being in mouths and being in proximity to food. Remember, we're talking about microscopic sizes of microplastics here. It's not just huge shards that you could see and pull out. It's leaching into the food. It's very small and you can't see it. Your baby can't see it, but it's in there. All right, all right. So what foods are we gonna find microplastics in? Can you guess which food you eat has plastic in it? Apparently if you eat enough microplastics, your voice changes like that too. That's actually a trick question because I think pretty much everything does. But today, let's talk about salt. Salt. Microplastics are kinda in everything. I've actually seen that they are in the raindrops falling from the sky. He's right, by the way. They are in the raindrops that are falling from the sky. Therefore, they are in the soils that our plants grow in. They are in the, the, the plants that our animals eat. They are also used because there is a legal limit on the amount of microplastics, or just 
plastic waste from supermarkets, things like plastic bags and bottle tops, etc. A legal amount that is allowed to be used in animal feed. So it's very, very difficult to avoid microplastics in your diet now. Don't let that depress you. There are things you can do. Buy a salt grinder and buy raw salt to go in it. Don't buy the prepackaged sh You know what I'm talking about, those little shakers. That's where all the nasty is. And if you wanna have some fun, Leave a comment below and tell me what the weirdest thing you've heard has microplastics in it. For me, going down this rabbit hole, it was sperm. To find out there's microplastics in male ejaculate just blew my mind. Like, I get it, it's everywhere, it's in us, but it's in sperm, man. Like, what? <laughs> There is microplastics in this cheese. This is the kind of cheese that would be on a McDonald's drive through burger, you know, your fast food restaurants, your kids' Lunchables, like the cheap, crappy, craft-style slices. No surprise, I don't think, to anybody that's still got, you know, anybody that's still here that this kind of quality of food would have microplastics in it. Look, it's clear from diving into some of this stuff that microplastics are everywhere and they're probably not going anywhere fast because nobody's coming to save you. No overlord is gonna come and wave a magic wand and just stop these companies from doing these egregious practices that impact the health of you and I. This is a grassroots movement. It really is up to you, as much as that might suck. I hope that you find that empowering too. So practically, what can you do? Yes. Transition away from things like plastic cutting boards. Nobody thinks about this. I grew up using a plastic cutting board for years, but every time you score that knife, you're gonna get these nanoparticles of plastic going into the food that you eat. Use Pyrex Tupperware dishes instead of plastic. Please don't heat up your food in a plastic container. Think of like the Chinese takeaway plastic box kind of thing. Or a lot of these meal delivery services, even some of them doing great food, but they deliver in plastic. Plastic bags, plastic wraps, dishwashers are terrible for this, especially if you put plastic in the dishwasher. And even if you don't, the plastic parts in the dishwasher and the dishwasher tabs, go look at one of those. What is it wrapped in? A little plastic wrapper. There's plastic in your water. There's plastic in the water that you drink and that you're bathing. So filtering is absolutely critical. Please in install, you know, at least a good carbon filter, like a countertop um, Berkey style system or a reverse osmosis under the sink system. Try and get a shower filter if you can. And just always remember to protect your detox pathways, to use your detox pathways as much as possible. And honestly, out there is kind of messed up. So let's point back in here and ask, what can I do? What can I do to control the health of myself, the health of my family, the health of my communities? How can I vote with my dollar? How can I not live in fear about all of this stuff? Sometimes there's not much we can do, but we can always choose a better outcome, a better attitude and better choices for ourselves and our families. So that's it from me, fam. Here you see a coffee cup, stainless steel. Here you see my water bottle, stainless steel. Drinking filtered water, of course. I'm just trying to do my best like all of you. Stay radical, stay aware, stay plastic free as much as you can. And I'll see you next time. Peace.